All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to unstick a bolt and save this C-clamp. All right, everybody, welcome back to the old iron shop. All right, guys, uh, so we got this thing freed up pretty good. It seems like it's working like it ought to, right? So this thing, uh, it began its, uh, you know, restoration, I guess we'll call it. I really didn't do much of a restoration here, but uh, I put it in a electrolysis tank. And, uh, you know, I'll put a card up here so you guys can check out that video. It was in there for a few days. Uh, I got pretty much most of the rust off of it. And I'll show you specifically, like, how we got the screw unstuck. Uh, you know, this could be applied to anything. If you've got broken off bolts or uh, just seized fasteners and things like that, uh, I work on old stuff, and this is... Something you're just going to run into. Sometimes these things have been put together a hundred years ago, and maybe it's never even been apart ever since. So sometimes it can be pretty tough. Sometimes like this one, it can not be that hard at all, actually. But I think good preparation is really the difference here. Because let me tell you what, this thing was like it was welded in there. It would not move not even a little bit when I first got it. But I got it cheap. All right, let's see if we can get this bolt stuck out here. So I had this thing in a electrolysis tank there for I don't know a few days I had to fool around with that I still got to come back and uh, you know I'll post another video about that I'll put a, a card up here in the corner but uh, yeah this thing was freed up the other day but it seems to have stuck again anyway this bolt that thing is locked in there tight so let's see if we can get this guy to come out well one of the first things you want to try See if we can get you in here really nice and close. But the threads have got all kinds of crud and stuff in there. So take this pick here, get in here and try to clean out all the stuff. Yeah, see there's some of it right there. There you go. So the trick is if you can get it as far in there as close as possible to where that thread starts into the casting. That'll help a lot. Really want to try to do this the whole thing all the way around. But I don't imagine everybody wants to watch that happen. I don't have one, but there's a tool that's uh, it's made for chasing threads. But it kind of has a file, but it has 60 degree notches of different pitches in it. And you can run it along this here and kind of work around the outside. Uh, that'd be a handy tool to have here right now. Okay, so I got it all picked out here around this a little bit. So now I'm going to come in here with the briar brush. Clean up them threads. At least a little bit. You can have some kind of a good hope of getting in there. Can you see that? It's pretty good there. You can see how cruddy and nasty these threads are. Just packed full of all kinds of stuff. So let's go inside the shop. We'll put this in the vise. See if we can get it broke loose. All right, so I don't have my machinist vise set up, so I'm just going to put this waxed piece of paper in here just to keep any oil or anything here from getting onto my leather lined jaws here, this pattern maker's vise. It is kind of nice, though, that it's, it's leather lined, so I can, I can grab this thing sort of any way I like, and it'll, it'll hold it secure. All right, and we'll tip that up, huh? All right, so this is a, a tip well, well worth noting here. Uh, if you're ever trying to get one of these things unstuck, you see guys will uh, stick a wrench on here like this and push on it, right? And inevitably this, this little tiny pin is gonna get bent. Uh, that's probably not the best way to go about it. Uh, this may apply to other places, but I think right here, this is the way it should go. So this just happens to be 9 16 which will fit over that shaft. And then the ball in kind of acts like the face of a nut. So at any rate, that's a good one. Make sure to remember that. So use whatever sort of penetrating oil you would like. I got a brand new can of three in one oil. Oh, 
Oh, my bad. It's already open. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this on here. And we're going to just see if we can get these threads moving at all. I don't have anything any better in the shop right now. WD-40, PB Blaster, or something like that. Whatever. Any of those will work. So, let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. It moved a little bit. You hear it? There. You can see it jump. Okay. We'll just kind of work it back and forth a little bit. See what happens here. Yeah. Hey. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, look at that. And once that oil starts getting down in there, it should start moving pretty good. All right. Hey, look at that. I still need to go and finish cleaning all the, the threads here, but I got a few of them. All right. I suppose I need to find another rusty part here to, to work on. That was that was almost too easy. All right, there we go. Yeah, that's got it. Just need to finish cleaning off the threads, oil it up real good, and we'll be good to go. All right, guys, if you enjoy these kind of videos, you like seeing machines being resurrected, pulled out of the scrapyard, uh, why don't you consider subscribing and uh, maybe even support my Patreon channel. Uh, it'll certainly help pay for all the little supplies and stuff that I need, and it doesn't take much. You know, every little bit helps. See you guys around.